Herbertus. My name is Robert B. I guess for lack of a better term. Um, I came across your question. I thought I would answer it for you. And um, since I saw I could do it on video and I've never done it before, I thought I'd give it a shot. Um, so um, here it goes and please bear with me. Um, and I'm also doing this on my iPad, so I have no idea how that's going to go either. Um, I guess the first thing I wanted to basically just go over a couple of things to make sure that we are at least on the same page academically. Um, make sure on, I don't. I want to make sure that we start at a good basis and move forward without um, with, with, without anybody getting lost. Um, the first thing I wanted to point out is, is that these Z scores over here um, are associated specifically with the Gaussian distribution, um, which of course I have plotted for you. Um, or is it? That's not it. That's not it. There it is. Which I have plotted for you right, well, right here. Okay. Um, one of the things I want you to point out is that, um, and of course, the z scores for the 95th percentile is, um, is, is here, is about there, and for the 5th is there, for the 10th, there, and so forth. The other thing that I wanted to point out is that um, for the case when um, the value is below the mean or the percentile is below 50, the Z scores are always negative. So for the, in the fifth percentile, it will be negative 1.64. And for the 95th percentile, it would be positive 1.64. Um, the last thing we wanted to point out is that you do have two raw data points. That is the, um, the data point for the 95th percentile. Well, and also for the fifth percentile, I actually said this backwards. So chances are, whatever we're going to do, we will be working with those two data points. Ooh, thunder. And um, the Z score is associated with that. Now, if you might recall, the Z score is nothing more than the data value, a particular data value, subtracted by its mean, by, by the mean of the distribution, and then divided by the variance. So it's basically a subtracted, shifted mean of the original data point and produces for you a distribution with mean zero and variance one. So it would turn out that the Z score for the fifth percentile, which I'll call it C5, will be the data point at the fifth percentile minus the mean divided by the variance. And that will be equal to negative 1.64 because again, You call it, I can see you can, I can see why we're in beta mode here. Oh, I can see what's going on. Um, negative 1.64, because again, we're below the mean. And then the Z score at the 10th percent, at the 95th percentile will be equal to the data value at the 95th percentile Again, shifted by the mean, normalized by the variance, and that will be equal to positive 1.64. And it turns out we know what X5 is. It's again, um, again, it's right there. And X95 is again right there. So we have two equations and two unknowns, and we can just basically go to town solving it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do that. I'm going to do that on a separate board. So, for Z5, we have negative 1.64 is going to be equal to 1640 minus the mean divided by the variance. I'm sorry, standard deviation. Z95 you're going to have positive 1.64 is equal to 1870 minus the mean divided by the variance. Okay, best thing to do might be is to substitute out the variance and solve for the mean. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, the first, if we, if we do that for Z5, you will have negative 1.64 times the standard deviation. I'm sorry, I keep on saying variance. Um, is equal to 1640 minus the mean. 
And then for Z95, 1.64 times the standard deviation is going to be equal to 1870 minus the mean. One thing we can do is we can change to sign for the first equation, um, for, for both sides of the first equation. And if we do that, we will have 1640. No, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Let me, let me fix that. So we're, going, we're basically going to take this entire equation here and multiply it by negative 1. And if we do, we will have 1.64 sigma is equal to mu minus 1640. Now, we can take this equation and set it equal to this equation. And when we do, we will have mu minus 1640 is equal to 1870 minus mu. Um, combining, uh, bring, um, bringing the mu's over to one side, we will have 2 mu is equal to 1870 plus 1640. And then mu will be nothing more than 1870 plus 1640 divided by two numbers, the average of those two numbers, and that should give you 1755. So there you go, there's mu. Now, how do you solve for sigma? Well, what you can do is you can take that value from mu and you can plug it into either or this equation, or I'm gonna play with my colors, this equation and solve for sigma. And I would recommend we go with Z95, which should be more straight. It'll be, it'll be less sign issues if we go with Z95. So let's just go ahead and do that. All right, let me get back to a normal color. Z95, or for Z95, we have that 1.64 is equal to 1870 minus 1755, that's our value for mu, divided by sigma, all right? Well, we can multiply both sides by sigma. We got 1.64 sigma is equal, and we can evaluate that. That turns out 1870 minus 1755 is 115. Okay, and then we just divide both sides by 1.64. We have that sigma is equal to one, 0.6. Nope, that's wrong. That is so wrong. Uh, 115 divided by 1.64, and that gives you a value of 70.12. And there you have it. Your mean is 1755. Your sigma is equal to 70.12. And it's all done by basically finding those two equations that you need to use. And then it's nothing more than two equations and two unknowns. And that's how it's done. Okay. Um, I hope you tolerated my very first <laughs> tutoring lesson here. Um, I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions, um, you know how to get a hold of me. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.